Hello everybody and welcome to LMM. It's now time for LMM Drives, our series where we look at different vehicles. Now, as you might be able to see, today is not going well for the NX has, well, it's stopped. But fear not, I have breakdown cover. And here comes the RAC now. You all right, mate? You're not the RAC. No, why? Are you going to kind of take me away from this, or...? No, social distancing, you can't get in. So you're going to help me fix the NX? I can't fix, ugly. Matt, ladies and gentlemen. The plus side is, Matt has picked up the vehicle that we're looking at today. So this is a 1968 Mark IV Austin Gypsy and uh, forgive me if I don't look at the camera too much because it's a bit of a handful on the road. You might think it looks rather similar to a Land Rover and you'd be right. The original Land Rover actually competed against this in military trials which is why there's so much similarity between the two but this is a lot better. This is a short wheelbase variant with a 2 litre BMC petrol engine. So it went into pretty much everything British of the era, to be honest. So what we have here is just a Land Rover Defender. Well, it's kind of the same, but it's very different. I mean, I wonder how many people will look at it and not actually understand the difference, because I mean, it's only the front end, really, that looks that different. Well, it was built for the same competition, so they kind of have to have the same shape. The military had requirements of how wide it is, how tall it is, so you kind of just wind up getting two very similar vehicles. So if you've joined our Discord, you'll know I'm big into my military history. And like I said, this competed against the Land Rover. Although it was better in pretty much every way, it lost out due to one key fact. You could only get two of them in an airplane where you could get three Land Rovers. That's just because of the steel body. This is significantly heavier than the Land Rover wound up being. There was also fears of its complexity at the time as well. It's, it's an unusual vehicle and I like that. So other cool fact I really like with it is this is all removable. Yeah, so the entire fiberglass comes off and the front folds down. My only concern is that normally then you'd think, oh, it looks like a Willys Jeep, but the doors are full height doors. So I, I think it would look really, really weird. Because you just have the door sticking up. That's so weird. They must come off somehow. There must be a way that they... Because that would be so weird to have none... Because that's the line no, no, across no here. No front, no back, just doors. And for... They must come off. There must be a bolt or something for them to... That's, that's really strange. I also really like things on it, like the massively oversized door handle there and the filler cap here, which is designed to... I mean, that's off a lorry. Yeah. That's what that came off. I, I, I think this was potentially an, uh, an Austin Parts bin special when it got put together. <laughs> the best way to describe driving this would be to call it an experience. Now, one of the most apparent things about it is this steering has nine linkages, believe it or not, taking it from the steering wheel down to the front wheels. And that means there's, um, there's some slack in it. Uh, kind of makes the whole driving sensation slightly odd. There's also on this percent, I don't often drive cars that are this high up. I drive the fire engine and things, but most of my cars sit low. So driving up here, it's very interesting. Every time we go around a corner, because there is so much roll in the suspension, the whole car kind of, it feels like there's rear wheel steer on it. It's very strange. And then it finds every single bump in the road. Now I've got a bit of clear road here so I can put my foot down. And it sounds like there is a micro light chasing me down. It sounds like it is just behind me. It's very, very strange. And I don't know how much of that is the purr of the engine and how much of that is actually the tires. So I've got off-road tires on, so there's a fair amount of roll because the noise coming from them. So the first thing that grabs your attention as you get in this is the steering wheel. And I do like a big steering wheel. I don't like these modern cars with tiny little steering wheels or racing steering wheels. I like this. This is no, good. I, I, I disagree. I don't like any steering wheel I have to squeeze underneath to get into the car. 
uh, admittedly there is slightly more than my hand between the wheel and the seat so that's a small point. I don't like the fact there's no horn on There's nothing on this steering wheel at all. There's no horn. There's nothing to slam on. No, and obviously there's no airbags. We have a bag of air in front of us, which is a tyre, and behind us. And that's about it. And then it has the weirdest column system I've ever seen. On it here, I have a single stalk that has the horn on it yep. and high-low. It's it, not even headlights. And yet you you see all the other switches scattered about the dash is what controls everything else. And the thing that is very confusing about this is I don't understand what they all do. I've established that this one here is our lights. Yeah. This one here, I have no... It's just sprung loaded. I have no idea what that does at all. Absolutely. You just... It, it, I don't know if it does anything. We have this, which is the heater. Yeah. And then that, which is fog lights. Right. And below that, we have a choke. That's 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 about <laughs> worth pointing out the speedo as well, which um gives you a loose estimate plus or minus about ten miles an hour as it bounces up and down near wherever you are. <laughs> you, it's a it's a taken average the speedo. So the other thing I like is I like my single gauge, which has three separate gauges within one cluster. It's it's quite nice. I like that. So I've got my oil pressure, my fuel, and my engine temperature. Now this we are slightly dubious about because whilst it moves off below the gauge. All we managed to get it to do the entire trip is cold. And temperature shouldn't just be cold, especially not in an old car like this. No, it should do something. It should be varying up and down, shouldn't it? It's, yeah. uh, it's quite strange. The other thing, of course, I really like is I've got my high-low and my uh, four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, and there's a plate next door to it with colour-coded system, so I know exactly what it is. I mean, it's so good to have the actual instructions next door to it, so an idiot like us can go, this is how I engage four-wheel drive. Yeah, I just don't know why they're half in French. Huh. So they are. Propulsion par les rois are. The French never bought these. Well, they know that they never buy English cars, do they? No. Uh, that, that is... Must be something to do with the army. Like, shared manoeuvres or... I mean, potentially it's because of NATO. That's why they had to do it for the shared manoeuvres, like you say. That would that make sense, I guess. I, I like how those shared manoeuvres as well as your heater as well. You've got your air conditioning system here. Oh, that's full power? Yeah, that, that's on air conditioning. And then it's half here, but you need a passenger to hold it in place. And then it's off. <laughs> that makes me so happy. I love that so it, much. It's better than the wiper controls, though, which are so loud it, as well. It moves. And the whole thing. Stop it there. Or there. The whole thing moves. That's brilliant. And you have two. Yeah, I, that doesn't work my side. I've got one. So if it's chucking it down, I suppose I don't need your side if it's chucking it down with rain, or I've got to reach across to your side <laughs> and try to turn it on. That's that is wonderful. Um, I assume the heater does something because it's right by your leg. So in awful weather, all that's going to happen is you're going to have one very hot leg. I'd like. There's so many holes in this. I'm pretty sure it probably just opens a hole to the engine. Just like yeah, just have that. Just have that heat. That's basically how it is. I mean, it's, it's a very landy thing, isn't it? Just a flap that opens. It's simple, but it's simple and it works because of that. I have quite enjoyed it on the drive today because it's been quite warm and that it has generated. The only problem is there is a tyre right in front of those flaps. So it kind of cuts all airflow off. Yeah, I mean, it makes it not so buffety, I suppose. But uh, yeah. I would like to take this windscreen off as well because the, the windscreen is literally held on with two thumb, uh, thumb screws. Thumb screws, yeah. Yeah, the uh, wing nuts. Wing nuts, that's what they are. And you sit there going... Is that? Yeah, it is. That's all that holds your... I, at least that's held on successfully, unlike the roof, which is held on by one... Pet. This this is like a time bomb here. We can do that, and then eventually, at some point during this clip, that's going to go bang and scare us. What's really scary is when you did that, it's not the roof that moved. It's no, the it's the windscreen. The windscreen moves back. My side is loose, but it is held on carefully with a cable tie, which brings us onto the roof, which is... Easily the worst bit of the vehicle. That said, it is only fiberglass, so it's not difficult to clean it up. It's just a yeah. lot of surface to clean up. Yes, uh, I, this this needs another coat of paint, doesn't it? Yes. It's it very is. much needs a coat of paint, which is a bit of a shame, because the only thing really that detracts on the inside away from it mm -hmm. is, is that. You've got your favourite indicators here as well. Oh, they, they are terrible. We have both now driven for some distance indicating yeah following behind in our chase vehicle with indica well, indicators of that flashing flashing headlights and both <laughs> me and him have been totally oblivious to this it's terrible I just, I just want something just let me know they're on just a flashing light a noise anything but it's also so far to have to reach when you're driving as well it's a proper stretch to get to the thing and as, as we said 
I, which way is this? Like you would have thought, I turn the wheel this way. So I'll turn it that way. Because that's the way we're going. But that's wrong. You it have would... to follow this, and this points vaguely where you want to go. Yeah, that, that will turn on a vague a indicator probably somewhere over there. It's it's very strange. And yeah, visibility is kind of... Although back there is fantastic. And I would like to take the roof off and drive it around, because it would be like a proper... What's, what are the... Um, the things they drive around on beaches, like the beach buggy things. Beach buggies, yeah. Yeah, one of them. That's what I think would be quite cool. It is cool with the tailgate as well, like the folding down tailgate. Mm -hmm. It's probably stable in motion as well. We've had that down a couple of times while we've been filming, and it, it, actually it's quite good. I wouldn't do 60 with it down, but, no, you know. It's quite cool, but the, the rear bit as it lifts up is dodgy as. Yes, the, the, they do not hold. That is... Uh, that's 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 sheer luck holding those up right we, now. We have them up behind the camera, and we're scared every time we move something in here that it's going to come down or whack the camera. But moving to the back, though, we do have these really cool, handy little storage things. Yeah, uh, they're in fact just giant bins underneath and double as seats. Speaking of seats as well, why does it do that? Um, I believe, don't quote me on this, it was uh, back in World War Two. you used to get uh, Willys Jeeps and they'd put a stretcher across the passenger seat. And I believe they had to fold flat so you can still get a stretcher in them. Well, that makes sense, that's about the right size and it would be high enough to go over the top of the bulkhead. Exactly, yeah. That, that makes sense. Um, what are yours folds though? No idea. So you can get a stretcher in this side as well. What, and you just drive it backwards like that? <laughs> It's, um, it's a weird driving position, isn't it? The pedals are quite... It's got almost a race car feel to it with the pedals. I, what gets me is the throttle pedal is so far depressed from where the brake pedal and the clutch pedal are. The clutch is so hard. I hate it. I hate that clutch. The clutch is singularly the worst thing about this entire car, and that includes the steering, which is... It's not that much slack. It's fine. Oh, it's fine, but it's... it's, it's there is slack there. Yes, it's fine. Things that I truly love about this car, I have an absolutely massive rear window. It's fantastic. I can see everything behind me. It's absolutely superb. Which is more than I can say for that corner there. I have no idea what's down there. There may be entire civilizations developing in that corner. Yeah, so visibility over there is bad. Not helped by the fact that I've got a spare tire on the front of the bonnet. I have no idea where the front of the car is over there. But I'm so high up, it doesn't really matter. Anything there, I'm pretty sure I'll just drive over it. Now, as for everything else in here, it's, um, it's not comfortable. I can't adjust the seat. And there is absolutely no neck or lumbar support anywhere. I have wing mirrors the size of saucers to try and see what's going on behind me. And uh, admittedly, they're not bad. I just, they're tiny though. Lots of things bang and crash in here as well. It's, um, it's a strange sensation. Now, as it bounced around on the road, I had the idea that maybe if I tried going a bit faster and joined a dual carriageway, maybe it would get better. It didn't. It really didn't. It made things a lot worse. Once you kind of got up to speed, it's more stable. And then you want to try and manoeuvre like, I don't know, round a roundabout. And it's, it's terrifying. Utterly terrifying. Other nice things we've got are these nice sliding windows which slide like that. Lovely little bit of window there. Oh, and now that's shut. I also like the fact, as we said, it's kind of, it's a weird blend. If you look at it from the front end, it's almost got a Willis Jeep look to it. You, yeah. I saw when I was following one of the cars earlier, I saw the front end and the reflection of the rear glass and I was like, it almost, it's, almost, it's just the position of the headlights and the grille. Yeah, the, the weird lumpy grill at the bottom is because there's actually a PTO coming out the front. Now, you stick a winch on there, and so it, that's just a removable panel which you can swap in oh, and out. Oh, it was out. driven off the engine. It wasn't an electric winch. No, it was a, a PTO-driven winch off the front, and on the fire engine variant, you've got a big pump there instead. Yes, I've seen them. They, it's bounced on the front end, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, which is... So, I presume you could then have a water tank in this space here. You could also have a pump behind it. There's oh, a PTO the off P the back as well. That's cool. That's very cool. And, I mean, on that, there were loads of variants of this, weren't there? I mean... Yeah, so I think there was a total of 15 different options you could pick. You had short wheelbase, long wheelbase, but there's a lot of options. Did that presumably come after the, uh, they finished with the army and the army were like... Yeah, so, so, so the Mark I Gypsy was a, a very, very standardised vehicle. And then as they progressed into the Mark II and the Mark IV, 
uh, that's when you start getting the variation of the short wheelbase, long wheelbase, different suspension options, different engine options. It's got to be a mess. Yes, because this one's on the, the rubber things. So yeah. this had a really, really unusual kind of suspension called flexinators. And instead of springs, it effectively has rubber inside of what look like dampers. And they control all the vibrations of the vehicle. Now, this might sound a bit weird and barbaric, but it made this one of the best off-road vehicles of its time. It truly is fantastic off-road. Coupled with that, while the Land Rover of the time had its gearbox, you had to stop to select all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive, as well as your high-low range, this has it all in one go. So I can select front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, high range and low range, all without stopping. The only thing it really does lack, which is a criticism of Land Rovers at the time as well, is a locking differential. Which means if you get both your front, one of your front wheels and one of your rear wheels up in the air while you're off-road, you're not getting out of there and you need some help. So, but presumably there were versions of it when they had standard suspension, leaf springs or springs or something. Yeah, so the first ones, uh, the Mark 1s didn't, they were all flexionator, and then the Mark 2 and Mark 4, because the farmers hated flexionators, because they tore when they tried to tow things, they swapped to uh, having a more normal rear suspension setup, and then eventually brought in a normal front suspension setup as well. That kind of makes sense as well. One of the things I do love about it is the fact it's part of that age where design doesn't, this one was a, a reserved vehicle, yeah. yet it still has half covers. Yep. And I, I just like the fact that you go, this vehicle needs to be bare necessities only. Hubcaps. Yeah. I think I think hubcaps. Polish it up nicely. Yeah. And I also love the way the bonnet's attached. Yeah, just with these uh, weird little clamps here. Yeah, which uh, presumably, are they the pull ones you pull it to release? Uh, yeah, I think you just pull up. Yeah, that's it. They're quite stiff and then you can get it off. That's such a weird... I mean, it's just one of these beautiful things with having all the old lights and the old rounded um, indicators and stuff by your front. Mm. It's got such a nice presence. It really marks it as a vehicle from the 60s. Oh yeah. And I guess it, you get the same feel with a Landy of this just, it's quite high yeah. and quite, it, like it's rare to come across, I guess these days you come across it all the time with SUVs and stuff which are bigger than we are. But it's so small dimensionally apart from height. Yeah, exactly. It, it looks it looks like somebody's just squashed it. I wonder if the soft top variant's a little bit lower. You can see the class for where that mounts on the side there. but. What if that had come down a little bit lower? Oh, what these? Yeah, that's where you tie down your soft top. Hmm. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Although it lost out to the Land Rover, Austin actually made a fair few of these, and due to its unsuccessful sales with farmers, they wound up getting used as Cold War era reserve vehicles. So in the event a nuclear apocalypse wiped out all of our Land Rovers, because, you know, they're not going to keep going, you had Austin's to fall back on. Famously reliable. With the military not buying them and farmers not buying them, they had to go somewhere. It meant at the time that when vehicles like this were picked up initially, you could get one for 90 quid. Whereas a Land Rover would set you back two and a half grand. So recovery companies picked them up and the RAC were offered them, but they bought Landys instead. The AA, however, did and operated a fleet of these up in Scotland as their Highland recovery vehicles. And to be honest, that's where these really shot. This was, in fact, the first vehicle ever to summit Ben Nevis, which is the highest mountain in the UK. Well, it does have brakes. I'm sure they were fitted at some point and it will eventually slow you down. There is no synchro on first and I have crunched this gearbox now so many times trying to put it into first and not. Not that it seems to matter, is it will pull away in seconds. The most interesting thing is the ratios seem to be relatively close together. So I'm now just approaching 30 as I shift into fourth. But fourth is all I've got. So I now need to ride fourth all the way up to, well, whatever speed I can take it to. The clutch is very, very, very aggressive. There is a millimeter between it being, this is fine and the back end going bang as it uh, takes up the slack. The big question is, would you have one? Yes. Yes. Think, like, uh, unarguably, I want one. I, I think these are insanely cool little cars. I've never wanted a Landy. 
Yeah. But after this, I'm like, I want one of these. Yeah. I don't know if a Jimny, like an old Jimny, would feel the same vibe to me. You've always wanted a Jimny, though. Yeah, and I could get a two-stroke engine and a first-gen one. Do they have two strokes? Two-stroke engine. No way. Do they do that? Was it always just a four-banger in this? Yes, I believe so. It was uh, either the petrol or the diesel. The diesel was a little bit bigger, but as it was an old diesel, it was not turbocharged and therefore was asthmatic. <laughs> yeah. uh, we are forgetting the one worst thing about these things. These are just horrendous tangle of belts. They, which They mount to one place down here, but there are three-point harness. They have to go on behind you. I, I, don't care. I kid you not, it took us an hour before we could take this out to work out how to put these in. And the owner just watched and laughed. Yeah. I'm surprised it even has seatbelts being in the 60s. It's, it's one year too late. One year too one late. One year too late, so it's got to have them. Although, none in the back. That's fine. I don't think it's actually rated to carry people. It just could. So, after it was sold off from being a reserve vehicle, this, we believe, ended up in a quarry. Mainly because the back end was smashed to whatever. And then, it was scrapped. And it looked like this. The current owner bought it because his brother had bought one of these as his first car when he was 16 and thought they'd quite like to have another one in their collection. And upon buying it from the scrapyard, the owner of the scrapyard asked them what they were going to do with it and said, are you going to break it for parts? Are you going to use the chassis for something? To which my friend said, nah mate, I'm going to do it up. To which the scrapyard owner laughed at him and went, there's not a chance in hell that that will ever run again. But here we are, as proof of that, as my friend says, I have restored worse. To which his brother will cut in and tell him, man, nah, this is probably one of the worst you've done. So it took many, many, many years to do this. And when it came back to putting it into a colour to paint it up, they didn't want to make it green like most of the uh, surplus military standby things are. No, 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 they wanted to do something a bit different. And although the vehicles had been used by the AA, they didn't want a canary yellow vehicle. They much preferred the colours that the RAC had. And whilst they didn't actually use these vehicles, they've recreated the livery that was put onto the Land Rovers and put it onto this. But you know what? It looks really good. So it's an authentic livery for different type of cars, which means it's totally inauthentic for this vehicle. And they take great joy in taking this to shows where people go up and go, oh, I didn't know the RAC had these. And they go, that's right. And it's, it's interesting some of the work that's gone into this. For instance, where Matt is, the shape of that is just coincidentally the same as the base of one of those big helium canisters you get. Because there's nothing else you can find to get that shape. So um, that's what that is. That is. And you, you can actually notice here, metal very thick, very solid. Here, <laughs> metal very thin. <laughs> That's brilliant. It's, it is a wonderful job. I spoke about the job and you saw the photos of how much work has gone in to bring this back to this standard. And the owner is very proud of it. And he, well, he should be for what it is. It's, it's a wonderful piece of kit. There are some issues. The, the seats are... I, no, I will fight in defence for those seats. They soak up the bumps along with the suspension so well when you're going along. Yes, yes they do. Because I've seen in the back there is a bench and that is definitely not the place to be. No, so they would have actually been able to take six people behind there in, in, in the past. That would have been just ridiculous. But the, the seat, whilst it is comfortable, and I, I'm not doubting that, although I do miss neck support, there is nothing to hold you in the seat. No. There is, it's, it's just, as it's bouncing around, you very much notice the lack of being able to move it mm -hmm. and the fact that when it starts going, I went this way and I'm, I'm falling out of the seat here. It's, um... I, I will make a point though. On the roads, the steering is terrifying. The steering will make you soil your undergarment, shall we say. It, it's the weird thing. It, it changes, don't you? You think you've got it. Yeah. And then you suddenly find yourself drifting and it's worse when you come to a corner because you're like yeah i've i don't know how you guys try but generally you go i've got a corner i need to step this much on the steering wheel yep. and you go round that's not how this works you have to shuffle the steering wheel yes <laughs> you go around the corner you are, i'm not going around this correctly and it's worse on roundabouts because you've suddenly got all the extra weight obviously there's no power steering yeah and you go onto the roundabout and you know come on come on and you've got all the extra weight as it's leaning as it goes around because it 
does lean. It leans alarmingly on the road. You say alarmingly, yet the second it's not on the road anymore, it's a dream. Oh yeah, as soon as we take it off road, it's far, far superior. There are some things you drive and they've got so much character and, and spirit. And this thing, this is a character. I think you can just, that's how you describe yes, this. Definitely. Um, anything you don't like? I don't like the wing mirrors. Uh, they're too small. I can't yeah, see anything. And, and the fact the driver's side one, every time you try and adjust it, it just kind of snaps back on you. Oh yeah, that, it, that's set. Yeah, you, you can't adjust that. <laughs> you, sometimes when you drive a vehicle of this size, you get a sense of you're more powerful and that you'll crush everything. This doesn't give that for me. This gives me, I, I feel very exposed in this. Yes, it, you're, you're aware that you are driving a little tin car with a fiberglass roof on it. And although you, you're, you're sat quite high up and you feel almost like you're in a van, you, you, you're aware it stops about that far in front of you and about that far behind it's, you. And anything near there, you're, you're done. It, it's, it's just weird. I've driven some things, I've driven Lotuses and stuff, which are fiberglass, but they give you a far better sense of you're going to be protected. Whereas this is like, nah, mate, anything goes wrong, nah, don't worry about it. You won't know about it. It, it doesn't fill me with confidence. Like the engine side of it and the transmission side of it, apart from the gear, reverse. Yes. Did you try, did you try reversing Re it? Re reverse is not fun. You have to tug up on the gear lever and it's, it's incredibly stiff. It, it, it doesn't have very slow if you're in high range. If you're trying to take off in first gear, it will go, oh, nothing, 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 nothing. I'm going as fast as I can! And, there, and there's nothing, and the engine for a petrol is amazingly talky, isn't it? Yes. That you can, you can drop the clutch in any gear and it's just like, yep, off we go then. They actually uprated the engines on the uh, later models, on oh, the really? Mark 4s and Mark 2s. The early ones, I don't quote me on this, had about 72 horsepower and the later ones about 82. So they did get a little bit beefier. That's not a lot for, I mean, I guess it doesn't weigh that much because, I mean, all of this being fiberglass gives it a much, it's very deceptive in the kind of the bulk of it. Yeah. Whereas the weight actually- The car uh, stops Yeah, here. stops here. So I guess it's not actually that heavy, but for what it is and for a vehicle that, I mean, this this went all over, didn't it? It, it can do a 60% gradient? 60 degree incline, yeah. Wait, that's mental. I, I think what's, what's terrifying is that it doesn't really want to do a 60 degree incline if you're sideways. Oh no. You get past about 15 and it's like, mm, no, this feels like this is tipping a lot. And they, they did, didn't they? Because yeah. despite the not being any metal up here, it's top heavy. Yes. If you actually look at it up here, it's so much higher than a Land Rover of the era would be. Like oh, really? You've got all of this weight up high, whereas everything else trying to tend to keep it a little bit lower. But that's what gives it such fantastic ground clearance. So. It is, re I mean, it's amazingly high. And this is, this is when I see like the new Range Rovers and things, that sit so close. I mean, when they're in drive mode, they sit closer to the road than the My 106 does. This is what I see and I go, yeah. this is an off-road vehicle. And even then, the exhaust on this is surprisingly low. Suspectedly misfit by the owners who think they might have bolted it somewhere it shouldn't have been bolted. Yeah, they, they admit that as, <laughs> as we were talking about clearances. They're like, yeah, watch the exhaust. <laughs> and uh, having done some of the roads around here, it's, it's the lowest point quite significantly. This is very much what this was built to do. It built to drive through this. And you know what? It does it well. I, I, I just, I can't believe how well it does it for a car that was built in the 1960s. It's just an amazing little piece of kit. And it just, it purrs away quite happy. You know what? The ride, the ride's brilliant for what it is. I would have thought it would have been terrible. I would have thought this would have really struggled or at least started to make you i thought driving down this kind of road you start to go oh yeah i can see that it's where its limitations would be no nope. no indication the thing that does make me think though that the people who have really tested these you know taking them up 60 degree slopes driven up ben nevis they must have had coonies because that would be terrifying like beyond terrifying I like the idea of taking it somewhere like into a jungle or to the North Pole. No, not to the North Pole. You'd freeze to death in this. You'd absolutely freeze. But I'd like to take it somewhere and do an adventure. It's, it feels like an adventure car. So it's, it's special. And I think that's what it is. There's such a sense of satisfaction of taking an older car and doing something like this with it. Not kind of being too precious with it and going, yeah, this is what it's meant to do and letting it do it. 
it's it's great. The the big thing as well is I'm very much trying to take the road track and undulate and drive over it straight because it's fine like that. As soon as you start dipping one side, it it, it feels um it feels a lot worse than it is, I think. But it does feel rather scary, and the seatbelt doesn't really help hold you in your seat when you're at an angle of something like that. It just feels unpleasant. But this is something that I can foresee us here at LMM wanting to do again, perhaps with something a little more modern. Oh, what, an, oh, what a vehicle to start green lading in. If you've never tried doing this, I can highly recommend it. And we're not even doing anything that's technical today. This is literally a walk in the park for this. It really is just really good fun. And you know what? It's a really good car. A really good car. The little dips and divots in the road aren't too bad, but when you get to ones like this, I thought it was going to be a lot worse. It, the suspension on this really does eat up all of these bumps. It is just fantastic at this. Uh, so because of this car's quite top heavy, what I'm trying to do is keep both of the sides of the vehicle at the same level. And you've just said what happens if I let go of the steering wheel, so I'm not going to do that anymore. It does try and follow the tracks as best it can, but the tracks aren't always the best place for it to be, especially with that exhaust hanging low. So we kind of have to pick our route a little bit differently to what everyone else has been going on down here. And I do want to point out that nothing this old has been down here today. It's all brand new, well, brand-ish new vehicles doing this green lane. So this guy really is a trooper. Alright, I have a theory for this thing because we got stuck in this on the way out. So I go down it like that. Seatbelt showing is worth. They didn't seem to like the look of that outside the car. I don't know why. We had issues with that going in, is that the car was tilting too much. So I went down it nose first. It's fine. It's fine. I'm trying to keep this as low power as possible as well, and we actually noticed that we can just use rear wheel drive. Like, this trail isn't that demanding, but we really don't need to swap into all wheel drive to get down this. so much fun taking this thing off-road though. I've wanted to green lane for ages. I really want a Jimny and this was I everything wrong. I wanted. I think we have. I think it's been something LMM has talked about doing for a while. Yes. And this has been a very long held. The only problem is that we can't do it together. So it's watching one of us go past and watching. I know that I've had a massive grin on my face mm. and that you've had a massive grin. It's, it's, it's kind of annoying to watch someone having that much enjoyment and not actually be there enjoying it with us. On the other hand, I don't know, it might be quite terrifying because there's been a couple of times it's gone. Ugh. Well, how was the driving position for you? Because it's, it, it's very much, I've driven a Defender and it's got the same thing of, you need that much more added to the side of the car. My arm is up against the window. See, I, I don't mind that. I had two complaints about the seating position. Getting in, for some reason, is really difficult. Did you catch your trousers every time? Yes, every time. I it, thought I'd rip them. Terrible. And the uh, handbrake is like right up against your leg at yep. all points. Apart from that, I actually find it quite comfortable. Like the, I didn't have any issues reaching the pedals or anything. It was actually quite nice. Yeah, but we're relatively tall. If you were shorter, you might have issues. But that's not an issue. <laughs> it's, there is a lack of a movement. How I am with you, driving off-road is where this thing... Driving on the road is an interesting experience. And as soon as you take it off-road, I've never driven anything that you take it off-road and you go, this is better. Normally it's like, oh, I'm struggling with this. This thing, we haven't done anything challenging. No, we've literally driven down a slightly bumpy track. But it's been fantastic. It, it, it's eaten everything. It's just like, yeah, keep going. Yeah. It's, it's, it's... I think we've had one moment where the wheels had a tiny bit of slippage and literally just slightly changed the line and it was fine. I'm surprised for an old, this is 60s, isn't it? Yep, 60s. So for something that's that old to ride as well as it does off road, 
Yeah. I would. I thought that, especially with the rubber in it, I thought it was going to be a far worse ride. It's a, well, it's not comfortable, but it ate up the the the, the bumpy bits yeah. far better than I ever thought it would. And it's for an old vehicle. It like it, it screams that it wants to do more. Like, it, yeah. It's sat there going, yeah, okay, what's next? It's 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 almost like it's hungry for more. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think the owners have done anything with it, but I, I really would like to take it to um, some of the off-road things, like, you know, proper green lending, where they take it silly things. I'd be terrified of breaking it, but I would really like to see what it could do. I just pray to God you don't roll it, because that fiberglass roof is doing nothing no, for there you. Is, there is nothing in there to save you. The only thing that might do it is there's the tyre in the back. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're in the back, you might be okay. What's your roll cage? Oh, my spare. One of the spares, it's got two spares. <laughs> I suppose this one is, is above the dash line. You don't want to roll this vehicle. No. I just do not want to roll. You're the, like most things, it's a bad idea. You will die. There's no getting around that. You will die. Yep. It's, um, and I think that's basically what it is. There's very few vehicles that uh, I think I drive these days. I get in to go, yeah, if things go wrong, I'm going to die. This one very much gives that impression. If you know if you muck it up, this is going to kill you. You're just terrified the entire time. It's lighter off-road, I found. Like, on the road, it's very heavy steering. Driving it around here, I was like, the steering's actually a lot nicer. Like, it feels one. You can feel, even though it's so many linkages and it's so complicated, I was like, I can feel this a lot more. It's, it, it's where it's meant to be. And I really think that, like, doing reviews out here and, like, taking the car to where it was designed to be for is just oh, yeah. so fantastic. And that brings us to the end of this look at the Austin Gypsy. And it's been a first for me to actually take this off-road and a long-held ambition of LMM to actually do a bit of green laning. And frankly, this has been the most fun I think it could have been on, well, on the terrain it is. Driving an old, well, vintage off-road machine. Yeah, that, that's pretty good on the conditions that it really, really does come to life in. And yes, as we said, I'd have one of these. This is now on the wish list. So guys, we hope you've enjoyed this new format of LMM drives. Hopefully this is what we're going to be doing moving forward, this kind of thing. So we hope you've all enjoyed it. Please, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, share this channel with your friends, and of course, leave a comment. Let us know, do you like this? Do you like this kind of thing? And what else you'd like to see coming up on the channel? And of course, if you have a vehicle that you'd like to let the team let loose with and have a go in, please get in contact, leave us a comment, or have a look on the website, there's the contact us form there. So guys, thank you very much. And, uh, we're going to just enjoy this for a little bit longer because what else would you do on a nice summer's evening? And if you enjoyed this video, how about clicking over here for one of the vehicles that I've done in America or over here at another one of our English reviews. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.